Hi guys, it's Frankie from Frankie Tech. Good to see you guys again. And I want to share with you guys now my final review of the OnePlus 9 Pro. Why do I mean final review? My time with this phone is coming to an end. And that's right guys, I've had this phone for well over two months now, but I wanna share the reasons, the reasons that I love this phone, but also the reasons why I think it's time to move on. Let's have a look. So once again guys, it's really hot in Hong Kong. That's why I have the air on. If you do hear it in the background, Apologies ahead of time. Look, the OnePlus 9 Pro is a terrific phone. And in terms of design, at 197 grams, 8.7 millimeters, it's very well within the range. You know, all the phones I've reviewed this year, it's actually lighter. You know, the Mi 11 Ultra is a hefty beast. So is the iPhone 12 Pro Max that I carry daily. But this OnePlus 9 Pro, I think in terms of design, did it right. And I do wish though, that the color, the selection had been better for this generation. The OnePlus 8 Pro, let's face it, it just looked better. And yes, the camera module is cool and you do have really good build quality. It feels though like a Samsung device in terms of design and the colors are really muted. But one little thing that no one mentions, the display size actually got smaller on this OnePlus 9 Pro from the previous generation. And I, for one, would have loved to just see the same 6.8 inch display size as we see on the Mi 11 or the Mi 11 Ultra or even the previous OnePlus 8 Pro. But talking about that display, a gorgeous Quad HD 120 hertz AMOLED display. It's a stunning display to say the least. And yet, you know, when you compare it to what you get on a Mi 11 Ultra or S21 Ultra, it's great, but it's pretty much on par, maybe a slight bit less. The colors could be a little bit better as well. I think the Find X3 Pro, from what I've heard, has a better display than this device. But look, the display is not a negative of this device. It's been excellent. Also excellent has been the performance with the Snapdragon 888 with a top end 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. This thing has been beastly. I really haven't run into any issues in terms of performance and the software, of course, with Oxygen OS on board. This, yes, is the China variant that I picked up, but they did flash the global ROM Oxygen OS on this phone. And that's why it's been just one of the best experiences. I would rate software to be probably the best of any phone maker out there. And I think though MIUI 12.5 with its improvements will slowly start closing the gap. But when it comes to performance and software, it's been a terrific time with this phone. Now in terms of battery, we have a 4,500 milliamp capacity and we have warp charge 65 watts and it's taken me roughly 30 minutes to charge this phone from zero to 100. That is excellent and I'd say battery life has been solid. That being said though, I would have loved to have seen a 5,000 milliamp capacity to really match what the other big boys are bringing to the table in the Mi 11 Ultra and the S21 Ultra. Dual speakers on this device, no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and wrapping up the cameras guys, they've been excellent. I've actually enjoyed the cameras quite a bit but they're just lacking that extra oomph, that extra feature that the big boys once again, and when I mention big boys, I'm talking the S21 Ultra and the Mi 11 Ultra. I love the cameras on this device, but they just don't compete with what those other two phones are offering. Look, the quality as you can see has been excellent, and even the telephoto can still produce pretty good results. But if you notice with my Mi 11 Ultra, I'm taking zoom shots all the time. And it's with that Periscope telephoto on phones like that and the S21 Ultra, where I think the OnePlus 9 Pro just misses the mark. And last but not least, I just want to mention the price. You know, at one point, OnePlus was the flagship killer. They were making incredible phones that just undercut the entire market. Of course, now they've moved up market and they've really positioned themselves as trying to be the number three in the race next to Apple, next to Samsung. But when it comes down to it, guys, can this compete with the S21 Ultra? I just don't think it can. Ultimately, this phone is just providing a little bit less for the same price or even lower now that you can pick up an S21 Ultra at a discount. In some ways, I'm really glad I got to try this phone out, but I will tell you, if I could kind of turn the clock back, I would probably have tried this phone first and then sold it and tried the S21 Ultra, and that would be the phone in my pocket alongside the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the Mi 11 Ultra as my third phone that I carry.
As it stands, the OnePlus 9 Pro has actually been kind of sitting on the sidelines and I find myself very content just carrying the 12 Pro Max and the Mi 11 Ultra with me on the daily. And that's the reason why this phone is going back. Nothing against it. To be honest, it's still a terrific device, but for me, the OnePlus 9 Pro just missed the mark a little bit to what could have been the best phone released in 2021. But hit me up in the comments. What are your thoughts on the OnePlus 9 Pro? And do you think it's the best flagship that's been released so far this year? Personally, I think you guys know that for me, the Mi 11 Ultra is the best flagship in my opinion, and the S21 Ultra 5G would be right here in the second place spot. But hit me up in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, give me that thumbs up. And if you love the content of Frankie Tech, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for future updates. Stay tuned guys, more great content coming as always here on the channel. And this is where I leave you by saying, this is Frankie Tech signing off. Have a good one. You've been terrific, but you just missed the mark.